Greetings, everybody. Welcome to our last Wednesday lecture for this semester. And we'll start by looking at an old reaction and seeing it relate, hopefully, to a new reaction. Chapter six, we learned about the acid catalyzed hydration of alkenes. And we learned that we're going to protonate our alkene using the pi electrons. using a strong acid. That doesn't change if you change to a carbonyl compound such as an aldehyde or a ketone. Here is an aldehyde or a ketone. An aldehyde, one of these groups has to be hydrogen. A uh, ketone, they both must be carbon. And the mechanism is the same. We're gonna generate a carbocation in both circumstances. So we would generate the more stable carbocation in both circumstances. And it looks like this. So I'll draw it down here so I can copy paste it. You want to put the uh, H up here. So you can generate a cation here. So we've got that here, move our title down a little bit here. And over here, the only difference is we have an oxygen here. And that actually makes this bottom reaction thousands of times faster much faster than above. Can you tell me why? And if I did ask that question on a test, you'd say, oh, the cation can resonate with the oxygen. Above, there's no oxygen to resonate with the cation. Otherwise, these look identical, I hope. Uh, what did you do in the next step in chapter six? Because you're going to do that in both chapter six and 10 here. You're going to use your water. Lone pair on the water. Attacks. Yeah, let's put it up here. Attacks the carbocation. Both circumstances. Makes a sigma bond right there, sigma bond right there. And we're generating a species that looks like this. It doesn't have a cation on the carbon anymore. It has an oxonium. Same down here. Doesn't have a cation on the carbon anymore. Has an oxonium. And the other O2. New oxonium. And what do we do to our oxonium to neutralize it? You got to remember the title says acid catalyzed. So if you used a strong acid catalyst, then you must regenerate the same strong acid catalyst before you're finished. And that's where you're going to use the sulfate ion that you generated in step one. That's going to be used both down here and up here. How is it going to be used? Same way both times. Lone pair grabs an H from the oxonium. Lone pair grabs an H from the oxonium. Oxygen gets a lone pair. That's how we neutralize oxoniums. Get their lone pairs back. And down uh, up here, we generated uh, an alcohol. And if you think about it, it is the hydrate of the alkene. Hydrate of an alkene. 
you added water to an alkene. We didn't call it that before, but it makes sense. And underneath, we call these hydrates of aldehydes or ketones, depending on if we started with an aldehyde or a ketone. So if this was formaldehyde, we'd call this formaldehyde hydrate. If this was acetone, we would call this acetone hydrate. If this was benzaldehyde, we'd call this benzaldehyde hydrate. Fair enough. So keep that in mind when we when I ask you the question, what happens to an aldehyde or a ketone under acidic conditions when water is present? You're going to say, oh, I think I remember the start of today's lecture. He said something about making, um, yeah, a hydrate. Remember that. It's coming up shortly. Now, in the interest of ending this semester, I'm only going to talk about materials that are relevant to carry you forth into the next course. So oxidation of alcohols using chromium-6 oxidation state is critically important for orgo-2. Periotic acid, we usually cover it. Under these trying times, we're not covering that. NAD plus, we'll look at it when we get into biochemistry in orgo two, but not right now. We're gonna focus for the rest of this segment and probably till the end of the next segment on chromium six oxidation of alcohols. We have to talk about chromic acid first. And those that have been paying attention know that chromic acid has the same Lewis structure as sulfuric acid. In 141, you said, oh, they are isoelectronic. There's chromic acid. You must know the two ways of making chromic acid. two ways it is made. Because you cannot buy chromic acid. You have to make it when you need to use it. You can buy this chemical, CRO3. Lewis, well, bonding structure looks like this. That's chromium-6 oxide. And I hope no one is surprised that if you add water to it in the presence of a strong acid such as sulfuric acid, you can hydrate it. Sound familiar? So you're still gonna have two of the double bonds to O one of the double bonds to is now a single. And you have this. And OH on the chromium. Are you surprised that's called acid catalyzed hydration? I hope not. Acid cat hydration. That's one way. Another way, start with a, another chromium that you're probably more familiar with. I don't know how familiar you are drawing it. That's CR207. with a two minus charge. Yep, that's one of your ions from your 141 days called dichromate. Just a reminder, these names are for these species that we started with. And same conditions.
you get an intermediate under acidic conditions. I don't know how lucky I am today. Let's see. I think I'm feeling pretty lucky right now. Hmm. It's a little big. And all that happens at first. Okay, my computer's pretending I'm doing nothing. Is this. And tell me what just happened. Putting a proton there and a proton there. Then move this into the box. Yep, that's just acid base. And then you're going to use water to break this thing apart. It's an intermediate, so you don't see it. It's, it's produced. But the same chemicals are going to be used to do this. And you tell me what you think happened here. H O C R double O double O. Got an OH on one side, H on the other side, attached to O. CR, wait. That's two molecules of chromic acid, two chromic acids. And using water to break a molecule apart, which is what happened, I don't think you'll be surprised to hear that's called hydro, using water, lysis, cutting, hydrolysis. Yes. So on this page, we have two reactions involving water, two out of the four, hydration, adding water to a molecule, adding water to a molecule. And that's the definition of hydration. And copy paste. What about hydrolysis? You're using water again but you're not adding it. Well, you are adding it, but you're also breaking apart the molecule. Using water, using water to break a molecule apart, to break a molecule, break a molecule apart. Okay. There are two more reactions where water is either a, a participant, like it is here, or it's produced. And we're going to review those too, learn and review. One's called condensation. Some people call that dehydration synthesis. And the other is called, let's see, condensation, and then dehydration, which would be the opposite of hydration. So hydrolysis is the opposite of condensation. I'll write that now as a preview. So if you did this reaction backwards, it would be called condensation. And just this one's the easy one. What's the opposite of hydration? Opposite of dehydration. So on this page, you do have some reference to all four reactions involving water and the textbook has them all delineated as well. Uh, so we are about to embark on our chromic acid oxidation of alcohols. Uh, starting next page and yeah, we're going to do about 10 minutes of it and then pick it up for our second segment as well. Continued.
So let's start with a simple alcohol That's tone. Today's going to be old school. We're not going to cut and paste anything from other sources. We're just going to make notes on a board, like as far as close as we can get to old school. I miss it sometimes. Acetone, we're going to use chromic acid. And the conditions that made chromic acid. Those chemicals. Water's the solvent and reactant. A little note. Solvent and reactant. And this is chromic acid oxidation of secondary alcohols. Yeah, squeeze it up here. Chromic acid oxidation of secondary alcohols. Uh, we have chromic acid, water, and sulfuric acid. That was the other chemical needed to make chromic acid, which of course you know. When all is said and done and we are finished with this lovely mechanism, uh, you're gonna get a ketone. And I wanna remind you why it's called oxidation right now. You replaced a bond from carbon to hydrogen for a bond to a more electronegative oxygen. The electrons moved away from carbon. When you move electrons away, that's the closest in organic chemistry as we get to losing electrons, which is oxidation. Let's put this over here a little closer. Side products. Sometimes they help guide us through a mechanism when we get stuck. Side products are H3O plus. Yep, the reaction gets progressively more acidic as the reaction proceeds. And you also get HCRO3. Ah, oh, chromium is less oxidized. I just want to remind you, this is H2CRO4. Cr plus six here either old school or new school. Easy seeing new school, it's got six bonds to more electronegative oxygen, it's plus six. When we draw the Lewis structure for that, you see it has only five bonds to more electronegative oxygen. So that's Cr plus five. What happened to chromium? Oxidation or reduction? Reduction, what happened to carbon? Oxidation or reduction? Oxidation, it's in the title. We only talk about what happens to carbon. Right. So there's my concession to modern technology. Just so you know where we started. This is going to be our mechanism down here. You get to do this mechanism on every test in Chem 242. I'm only going to word it that way. I think positively in my life. Not about what happens every test if you don't do it right. Just what happens if you do it right. All right. Some of you have had lab with me and you've learned about esterification, which is a condensation reaction. We are going to do a condensation reaction. And you can do condensation reactions between, I call this acetone. That is wild. Obviously, I was thinking ahead. Nope. Oh, I can't get rid of just the name either. That's not acetone. Acetone's name says there's a ketone there. This is acetone. See, in my head, I was making acetone. Thanks for not interrupting me. That's two propanol, isn't it? Better fix that up here too. Nice thing is I should be able to copy it this time. Hmm. 
We're making acetone. Starting with an alcohol. Chapter 10 is about alcohols. Okay, now to make an ester, we need this O bonded to the CR, but the CR is not reactive towards a poor nucleophile like an alcohol. Just a reminder, put some reminders here. Poor nu. So that extends beyond reactions in chapter nine. To make this more reactive, to a nucleophile, you have to protonate one of the carb uh, chromonyls. Chromonyl is analogous to carbonyl. I'll protonate the bottom one. Choose the bottom or the top. Don't choose the other ones uh, for one simple reason. They're not as basic. They do not pick up a proton to make a resonance stabilized oxonium like this one does. So I'm gonna call this step one. Just green arrows for step one, two, three, four. We're doing four steps. Step one is protonation of the chromonyl. Chromonyl, like carbonyl, but chromium instead of carbon. Double bond O. Oxonium. Chromium is now much more reactive. That oxygen's pulling electrons more strongly than it used to. Two propanol sees this chromium, says, yeah, I'll attack that now. I got a lone pair. I'm not much of a nucleophile, but when I see a chromium like that, I'm coming. And there's how we neutralize oxoniums. You attack the adjacent atom and give them a pair of electrons back. Step two, your nucleophiles attacking the chromium. And put my alcohol a little sideways here. There's that. Now the chromium has how many OHs? It had one to the left before, still does. It has one to the right before, it still does. It has a new one on the bottom. And it has a double bond O on the top. That's an oxonium. Oxonium with a pKa of minus three. Do we need very good base to deprotonate the oxonium? We do not. In fact, we generated hydrogen sulfate in the first step. And it's a catalyst all the way through this reaction, more than once. So we are now regenerating the catalyst for the first time. And what we have here, something that almost looks like a chromate ester. And I'll tell you how you know it's not a chromate ester. A chromate ester has to look just like a chromic acid, like this, but you take one of the acid H's off and put the isopropyl. So if I took this H off and put an isopropyl there, I would have what's called a chromate ester. This thing doesn't have the two double bonds to O. It will very soon. I want you to remember one, two, three, and what I'm about to do, four, it's called condensation. There's two parts to the definition of condensation. You must know them forever. Not messing around. There's so much condensation in, in organic chemistry and in biochemistry. Every large molecule in your inside you and me was made using condensation reactions. We need to know what the definition is. Condensation. Bringing two smaller molecules together to make a larger molecule while a small molecule it doesn't have to be water, but it often is like water. 
is lost. Don't skip any parts of that definition or else you think you'll think that you'll think that hydration is a uh, or uh, hydrolysis is a condensation. You'd be wrong. No, they're different. I'm going to make this bigger because it's important. And we'll move it down. If it lets me. Bring two smaller molecules together, make a larger molecule while a small molecule like water is lost. And we have not lost a small molecule like water. Not yet. Step four will be the dehydration step. Dehydration is one step in condensation. It's, they're not the same thing. Dehydration involves, a, I'm going to write it down. Four equals dehydration. The definition will be written right below. Very simple. A molecule loses water. Here is a molecule and it's about to lose water. It needs the catalyst again. The base does what the base always does, takes a proton. What proton needs to be taken? Wow. Okay, I didn't do that. Psi. The proton off one of the three O's needs to go away. Uh, one of the OH's needs to go away. So how am I going to do that here? How do you make water leave? Well, you generally have to protonate it first, right? So here, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to combine it with this. This looks like an elimination because it is. I want to make sure you know that that arrow started in the middle of this bond. And then OH can't leave, but if it's water, it can leave. Now, for my good students right now, they're saying, wow, okay, we've seen something that looks almost exactly the same as that called tautomerization. And you're, if you're thinking that way, you're, you've got arrows working in your mind, and that's good. These arrows are virtually identical to tautomerization. The only thing different is tautomerization, this would be a pi bond picking up a proton. But the arrows are all the same. And we are now here at the chromate ester stage. How do I know it's a chromate ester? Because I look at chromic acid on the screen uh, over the arrow and I see this thing. I know the OH is really this OH over here. I just moved it over here so it looked more like this. It's got a carbon group on an O instead of the H of an acid chromic acid here. This is chromic acid. Chromic acid, just in case you forgot. That there is chromic acid. That's my attempt at a blocked arrow. It looks terrible. And chromate esters are unstable. They have a way of chromi chromium getting a lower oxidation state, which is what it wanted all along. Ester is unstable. All right, so let's pretend we've never seen this mechanism before, which is probably true for everybody. And try to think our way through it, because I'm, I'm telling you with this arrow that this molecule and one other molecule becomes all three of these. What is the other molecule? Hydronium is the conjugate acid of, yes, water. Water is needed in the last step. 
It's reactant and solvent. We needed it, needed it to make our chromic acid before we even started. Yeah, I don't know if I want to put it right there. If I do put it there, I'll put it like this. There's water. Now, how does it pick up a proton? Question. This carbon, when we're done, does it have any bonds to hydrogen? Answer, no. This carbon, before we're done, has a bond to hydrogen. That must be the hydrogen that water takes. The carbon that's going to become a carbonyl has a hydrogen. It had it from the beginning. And my pen timed out. It had it from the beginning. And water's going to take it. That's a green arrow. We don't do that. That's going to become hydronium. Sigma becomes pi. Chromium is the leaving group, and it gets reduced. It gets a lone pair. You don't see that a lot. And I just want, before we go for a break, I know this was a longish segment, I want to point out that both of these are elimination reactions. Elimination of water has a different name. It's already, we already talked about it a second ago. Dehydration. And this is an elimination too. Do you want to see the alphas and the betas? Where a leaving group is, is alpha. Hey, it doesn't always have to be a carbon. This thing has a leaving group. And this has a hydrogen. And this has a hydrogen. And what do you always make during elimination? Pi between alpha and beta. And that's what I have. Alpha, beta, pi. Alpha, beta, pi when you're done. And this is a way we make secondary alcohols into ketones. And that is our first break. Might be a little bit to render our video because it's a little on the long side. But we're coming back. This is a real important stuff. See you soon. <laughs>